What is prayer? What is Shemona Esrei? And prayer is one of the most important things that we can do. It is the request for divine mercy on us from God who is continuously creating the world. And that is why it is so important to connect to prayer, to pray three times a day with the Shemona Esrei, and to really concentrate on your prayer because this is the time to make this request. And I'll tell you a secret about Shemona Esrei. Rabbi Shmuel Bar Nachmani, in the name of Rabbi Yochanan says, the 18 blessings of Shemona Esrei correspond to the 18 commands that are written in the second scripture passage about the building of the Mishkan. In Pekudei, there are 18 commands which are talking about the fabrication and assembly of the Mishkan. And it says over there, as Hashem commanded Moses 18 times. The connection between Shemona Esrei and building the temple is like you building when you pray. And that each act of prayer, each act of Torah learning, each act of mitzvot strengthens and brings order to the spiritual dimensions of the world and refines yourself and you start to make yourself more holy and you start to see new things in the spiritual dimension. And I have another secret for you to help get your prayers answered. I have Acha Bar Yaakov says, if somebody makes an error in prayer in the blessing of the patriarchs, this is going to be the first blessing of Shemona Esra. And an error there is a very bad sign that somebody's prayer is going to be undesirable. Rabbi Yeshua Ben Levi said, if the lips of a person produce fruit and his words of prayer flow effortlessly from his lips, he will be informed that his prayer for Shmona Esrei was accepted. And what is the scriptural basis for this teaching? When one produces fruit of the lips, then peace, peace for far and near, says Hashem, and I will heal him. If the praying is done in a clean way where there's not bumbling and there's stumbling and a person prays well, there's a good chance that heaven is going to help to grant requests. If you're not concentrating while you are praying, you did not pray. That is the halacha by the Rambam. The Shema also requires tense concentration. The first verse, which you have to talk about God's absolute oneness and his total sovereignty. And again, you're trying to connect with this idea of Ein Od Mavado. And we're saying the Shema, the difference with this and the Shemona Esrei, tensity is going to be for a shorter period of time because the Shemona Esrei is a much longer set of prayers. It's just you and the creator of the universe. You're connecting to this higher source. Prayer requires specific concentration from beginning to end. So you should be able to exert yourself spiritually and concentrate. If you want to work on your ability to earn more Parnassah, there's a lot of stories about people who get special Baracha in saying Berkat Mazon for a longer period of time with intense concentration. In fact, when people go to Rabbi Kanievsky and ask, what do I do to earn more Parnassah? The first thing he's going to go and tell you, he's going to say, spend more time doing Berkat Mazon because there's a connection, there's a pipeline going from thanking Hashem, being grateful for his sustenance of you. He created you, he's sustaining you, and you are thanking him. Now, there's a theme that shows up in the Midrashim and the Halachot that once somebody is no longer grateful, you are no longer obligated to go and help him. You don't have to go spend any extra effort to go help him out if he's not grateful. And it's very serious not to be grateful to a Shem for sustaining you. So, Berkat de Mazon is a very, very special prayer. Rabbi Hiskia in the Gemara and Rabbi Yaakov Bar Acha were sitting outdoors in a certain place, and Rabbi Yaakov Bar Acha had with him some perutos. These are coins that are very low value. The time of prayer arrived, and Rabbi Yaakov gave perutos to Rabbi Hiskia. Rabbi Hiskia tied one part to his belt, another part forming a pouch in which he placed the perutos, but the knot loosened and the Prutus fell out and they were lost, seeing that Rabbi Hiskia felt guilty about the loss of Rabbi Yaakov's coins. Rabbi Yaakov said to him, What more were you able to 
do. He's basically saying that it's an onus, it's an unavoidable loss. This is really a idea that also shows the derech eretz, because you're concerned for your fellow Jew for the quality of their prayer as well, and showing that you have to do things to try to give your fellow Jew a good feeling. You have to be concerned about the welfare of your brother Jew. You are required in the Torah to do it. And anyway, don't you want to live in the kind of society where we're all brothers and we're all looking out for each other? We're all trying to help each other out? Isn't that a more healthy civilization and society to be part of? And that's what Judaism promises when you follow the laws. When you go and you are Haredi and you go and you live in a Haredi neighborhood, that's what happens. Everybody looks out for everyone else. Everyone helps out everyone else. And you end up living in a more fulfilling life environment, you are part of a neighborhood and you have this community to help you and you're part of a community and you're looking out for other people's well-being and they're looking out for you. And that's why it's so important to be careful who your neighbors are and to be careful who your friends are. And that's why it's so important to live in a Jewish neighborhood where people are observing the halachot. The Gemara wants to continue. One of the workers in the Ben Hamikdash was carrying the purification waters, and the time came for saying Shema. The halacha is you're not allowed to divert your attention, and if you do divert your attention, it invalidates it, according to the point of Rabbi Yochanan. If this process with the waters and the ashes weren't done yet, if you already had the intention to bring the waters for the paraduma and your mind diverted attention, then you can't use it for the paraduma. Now keep in mind, the water on the paraduma has a level of tahor that is at a higher level than even a mikvah. This is something that you can't lose any distraction on. And so if it were before you've assembled the water purification and you lost your attention and you've lost your concentration, then you can't use it. In the Cherumos and in, in Kodeship, that one of the requirements is that you have to maintain your attention. You have to guard it. Torah says you're, you are to guard it. You have to be able to keep your attention on these things as well that have the sanctity. You're not allowed to go and divert your attention from it. And if you do, then you can't use it anymore. So you have to really keep your head in the game when you're a Jew. You have to keep your head in the game when you're praying, while you're saying the Shema. You have to really be focused. And why is that? Because our reason for existence is to make ourselves holy and is to be holy to Hashem. The only way to do that is to follow all of the halachot, follow the mitzvot, and to keep the observance of the Torah. Once you you have this level of holiness, the metaphysical experience that you are going to have in your lifetime is going to be completely new. You're going to see completely new things in your lifetime. And when you open up the Torah and you read these amazing things that happen to all of the patriarchs and the matriarchs and the amazing things that happen to Moshe Rabbeinu, you can also see amazing things happen in your life. This is the guarantee to every Jew. This is not for those people. This is for you, for you to be able to have as well. You are put here as a Jew. There is so much meaning for it. And everything that is promised to the patriarchs is promised to you. And you can transform yourself by having all of the observance with the halachot and the mitzvot, where you can start to transform yourself into being holy. And the more holy you get, the more you're going to see a change in your experience because Hashem is continuously creating is going to start to rearrange the universe in a completely different way for you and that is why you really need to cling to Torah learning so that you can know what is to may and what is to whore so you can refine yourself and you can make yourself more holy and the best way to start is to start to learn and to start today to concentrate more on your Shemona Esrei and your Shema. If you're not really doing those things today, you don't really understand the Shema, you don't really understand Shemona Esrei, that's okay. Go contact a Haredi Orthodox rabbi and go learn from these guys. They are going to walk you through it hand in hand and you are going to start to see and experience the treasure that is there for you. So don't lose out in this lifetime. Have a great day.